is an emotional journey for a lot of people gathered here today. The deceased was well known and liked in the community. And as is often the case in Ghana, a lot of well wishes come out to pay their last respect to the departed and grieve with the family. We are not an individualist culture. We are the sum of every achievement and shortcomings of the whole clan, tribe and country. Practically, this means that it is the responsibility of the family or clan to ensure that each member properly performs all the four main rites of passage, which binds individuals to their clan and entrenches them in culture in our country. So serious are these requirements that a family may suffer great shame when they do not successfully mark this right. Death is a serious state of affairs in Ghana. Funerals are as much for the dead as they are for the family. They give the bereaved an important sense of closure. Is the only way for a family to move on. But for that to happen, there is one thing you absolutely must have. The body of the deceased. My name is Isaac Menson and I cannot bury my father. In 2005, my family received the horrifying news that my father had been killed in the Gambia whilst migrating to Europe. He was one of the Ghana 44 as it came to be referred to. My father was survived by a wife and three children. His person left me in shock. It's natural to bury a father but definitely not at a younger age, not in his prime, and not under the circumstances under which he died. In 2017, I joined the campaign to fill the gaps about the Ghana 44 killings and finally get justice. Oh, <laughs> But ye pursue your hoon, said Saint and Nami Papa, what's your name of Rasano? Saint and Nova Tier. Eh, oh, Papa, on family form. And you crack. Papa dear, on family dear girl, send a missing woman, send us a year far farming one. Yaman Quan and him. Yaman Quan and him, and then Tom. On family form, Cora. We call her no dimity, we call her no dimity, and I'm so I'm a man to look at two school. So we are school no more. Now, just say we are in the college. To we are in the college, no, no buy a consumer. You may be buy a a kuyapa. We are very, very, very. The crack is now. Then all the talk is gone. Ah, so. You tell me, Shadan, we go and we go. 
It is interesting piecing all of this together. I remember when I was 12 years old, as I set off one early morning in March to school, my mom told me that my dad was going to Kumasi to collect money from Kuyapa Koko Limited to pay his Koko farmers. When I came back from school later that day, I was expecting to find my dad at home. Weeks passed and he had not returned. Every time I asked for him, my mother would tell me, he will be coming. I finally heard somewhere that my father had traveled abroad. When he got to Senegal, he would call my mother. One day she told us that he will be coming back in August instead of continuing on with his journey to Europe. We were expecting him that month, but we heard the breaking news of what had happened in Gambia. <laughs> certificate <laughs> When you are a crater, you are a crater. 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 You are Oma de krata no e bre Ghana aban ohun enti Ghana aban e de sa krata ni bi bre mo ana dabi 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 mi hun fa bi mre mi hun krata bi enti hun hwi e ya re husem o ya 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 en kan hun asem se te mi hun info na na mi yura ho yura ho se pa ni pe se na mi hun no krata bi o
My name is Ko. Name is Aduma. Yawada. I am setting off to Accra today to visit a number of activists who have been instrumental in seeking for justice for families of victims of the Ghana 44. Though I was quite young, I remember that in order to close the case, some of the family members were given money. To find out more, I am meeting with Mina Mensa. Her organization, the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, took up the case back in 2005, really advocating for us. So how did you feel when the government secured some monies for the Ghanaian victims? Honestly, I was upset. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it's not only about money, it's about justice for the victims. If um, proper work had been done, then I guess the families would have gotten more than what they got. And they would have also gotten justice. So could you brief us about how you disbezzled, how the money was disbezzled? Do you know, do you have any idea about it? No, this, this, was, this was purely done by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay. I had no clue. I just heard that they had given the family 10,000 CDs. They had used some to uh, buy uh, coffins. They had used some to dig graves, which I thought should have been government's responsibility. And then they had used, in fact, what even um, upset me was the fact that they even said that they had used some of the money as a donation. How could government use monies that had been released for the families, use the same money as donation, and then also use some as certain allowance? Mommy, for those who were uh, with, went to the meeting. With donations, who did they donate the money to? I have no idea, I wasn't there. Okay. Ah, uh, this is where? Yeah. In loving memory of 44 Ghanaians who lost their lives under tragic circumstances in the Gambia in 2005. Like you said, 44 Ghanaians, and you just return only eight bodies, or six. And that is what the Gav Gambian government returned to us. I think eight bodies were brought initially, or so. And it's been a long while. And one of them was found not to be a Ghanaian. On what basis did they identify that th those people here, these people here are Ghanaians? And well, there was a pathologist. So I guess scientifically from their identification, these are Ghanaians. It was a very unfortunate um, situation, but I guess um, this is how far we've come with it. We can get information one way or the other. Not, it might not be the kind of information that would probably put everything to rest, but it will be information that would help you <laughs> as you go along. Okay, mommy, thank you, okay. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Like, like my head is, is aching, like, I can't, I, I can't stand it. I imagine my father's long-awaited funeral. It would take place in the city center of Akomadan, where events are frequent occurrence. I imagine my hand gliding over the wooden casket that would give my father a proper final physical abode. It has been over 10 years so I am aware that we will be burying his bones. It does not matter. He deserves to be buried with dignity. I can see us wrapped in a red and black cloth. Red to symbolize our pain. Black for the sudden death. I can hear the women wailing. 
my mother and grandparents screaming at the coffin. So our echoes will accompany my father's soul on his journey to the afterlife. He wouldn't know he was loved and would be missed. I am meeting with Professor Kwame Kakari, the former executive director of Media Foundation for West Africa. He was also around with Mina campaigning for justice. He has been campaigning all these years for the Right to Information Act to be passed in Ghana. Prof, so now that the Right to Information Act has been passed, can people like me try to get access to those files concerning the tragedy of my father's case? I believe so because the Ghana government and the Gambian government were in negotiations concerning that whole issue. Because the right to information is a constitutionally guaranteed right as citizens and as children of the victims, you have every right to get information concerning that whole issue. So, Prof, on the corona thing, how best can we try and then see him so that he can help us with the aid bodies returned, like their names and... Their identities. Yes. The coroner performed his or her work for a, a government institution, so it should be a part of it to request to get the coroner's report mm. so that we know the, the true identities. We want information about that experience so that we will pursue justice for the victims because Yaya Jame cannot go scot-free. Scot this is really a case of crimes against humanity yes. because these are people who committed no crime at all. Yes. They were West African citizens, so you couldn't even say that they were in the Gambia illegally. If anybody is in a country illegally, you return them to where they came from. You don't murder them. Now, there is a, a truth and reconciliation process going on in the Gambia, which is gathering evidence. The security agents, they are giving information and evidence that yes, Yayajame ordered them to kill those people. So there is uh, evidence in, in the Gambia that Yaya Jame was responsible. He cannot deny this. OK, Prof, so can we try Yaya Jame in Ghana? Can we try him here in Ghana? Yeah, Ghana can, can, can try Yaya Jame here. Why not? Okay. It's a matter of politics. If the Ghana government politically has the will, wants Yaya Jame to be tried here. He can be tried here. The only question is whether the dictator in Equatorial Guinea will allow him to be brought out of his hiding place in Equatorial Guinea. It has been difficult to mourn my father without his remains and without us getting justice. The most difficult part of our experience is that we do not feel supported by the Ghana government. I don't think we are being treated fairly. Is it because my father and the others were migrants? Hmm. It has been an emotional journey. I am meeting with Enoch, whose father was also among the group. He is also part of our efforts to get justice. It has not been easy for him either. My dad was, was a very good person. He was a very strong Christian. He was even in a choir. Oh, okay. He was even part of the mass choir. They used to sing and all that. My dad was into business, into shoe business. So he wanted to extend his business going to Spain, you yeah. understand, and the strategy happened. And, and he, he, he was somebody who loved my mom so much, like he loved her so much. And this thing is, is so sad. 
you know something i i heard somewhere that some of the junglers are confessing and i have this on my on my phone can we can we have a view of it hmm. so when i took this man up to the ditch before we reached the ditch he was having a note 100 euro note ejf told me he told me that it's, it's not necessary for me to die with this you are living you may use it you have been nice to me since we took off from banjo when we arrive he asked me to give him cha sanamanyan told me finish finish him he asked me for for me to allow him to say his prayers i said go ahead he kneeled down to say his prayers then sanamanja has already released the shot and fired him people that did the job yeah. people that did the execution yeah. have come out to come and say that we did this so what is the government waiting for our current president now nana you were the foreign minister, you the foreign minister. If, even right. that time you don't have power yes now you are the overall boss yeah. Now you have power. He is the president. If you say do this, it will be done. Yes. So what are we waiting for? Families are struggling. Yes. 44 Ghanaians, people's uncles that were hopes, people's fathers are killed. That's and true. They were people that they were going out there to bring winner pastors to their family. They are killed. And Nana Kufuado, you are the one who always say that about migration, people traveling to other places. You are yeah. concerned about that. It's, you understand? It, it, it and we expect the Ghana government to take this matter up. Give us justice. If I heard Yaya Jame is in Equatorial Guinea, yeah, he's there. Bring this man, whatever diplomatic, uh, what they call it, movement or um, political, whatever thing you have to yeah. follow, they should follow for us. Well, you, you know something? Maybe they have something to hide. Maybe, maybe they are protecting the maybe, interests of, of Yaya maybe, Jame. Maybe diplomatic call or something. But I don't why? think this thing is about diplomatic. Why do you There's have no to, diplomacy? Why, this. why do you have to protect an outsider, a foreigner? At the expense of yes, your of your is. own indigents, that is not that is not fair. <laughs> it is time to tell my family about all that I learned in Accra. It was hard listening to those men talk about the murders. It pained me. I believe it was my father who was killed after handing over the hundred euro notes. My mother told me she had sewn some money in his trousers. <laughs> So be quite no no one for any number and you answer any say. It's you now over to a NASA, he found a walk on one train and no fifty year work. Come this idea. Your meaning the penny money, no quasi money. You never be a banner, me banner, and over here. Me banner, and over here, me who are told here. There's a one here, and all to me for Kuna Bra. One who Baba and what? One who could be our no hope. No, son of ours, why I hope me Kuna and I hope I don't know what I want for no umbrella. Namens here, my dear. I find solace in the church. It has been central to my life, both in joy and sorrow. I feel at home. 
the church has provided comfort for all these questions that haunted me. Did my father suffer? What was he wearing? What were his last thoughts? I read somewhere that the surest way to remember the dead is not the type of coffins used to bury them, nor the type of cloth or t-shirt worn during their funeral, but doing something positive for the dead which will benefit the living. I really want to honor my father's life and help others who seek to make that journey know that they do have human rights. It does not matter whether that journey is legal or not. I have come a long way and still have far to go. From mumbling to people, it is a long story. And go in shame and silence to being here today confronting the past so that we may all look ahead. I know my father would be so proud that despite his remains still not being given the proper send off, his son is pushing the Ghanaian government to do the right thing.